YouTube. This is Mike. Today is May 3rd, 2021. I'm playing a game called Kino Explosion. This is at the Red Rock machine 0714-01. The reason I'm playing this is I have a theory that the numbers covered by bombs like here 79, 38, and um, where's the other one? It would have been at 46. Are hit by the 20 number ball draw more often than would be statistically expected. In particular, the game seems to hit all three bombs way more than would be statistically expected assuming a fair ball draw. So that is my hypothesis, that these numbers with balls are be being hit too often, especially all three of them. So that, there you go. I've stated my hypothesis in advance, so now let's play and gather some data. And we're not gonna, we're not gonna count this game here, but we're gonna start with this game right now.
two screens to this game. Note this sentence right here at the bottom. It says, explosions and fragments are evaluated after all numbers are drawn. You can interpret that how you wish, but I think it deserves to be emphasized. So I also think it's worth mentioning, it's very important, that there's a law in Nevada that basically states that a video representation of a casino game must play by the same natural odds as if it were being dealt with real cards, dice, or in this case being kino balls. So let's go on.
hey YouTube, so I think that was enough data. And so now I'm gonna go home and look at it carefully and count up how often the bombs exploded. And then I'll analyze it and um, let's see what happens. We are back at my house after this whole recording session at the Red Rock. And I have looked at the video coverage First, let me explain that I took five separate videos at the Red Rock because I have a very difficult time getting long videos out of my iPhone. And I thought if I kept them to about five minutes, I would be okay, but I still wasn't. I could only extract three of the five from my iPhone. And that's what this video shows. It's the three that I could get out. The other two I watched on my iPhone and I will show the results both ways whether it being the first three videos in this video or all five. So this shows the results right here. Here we got zero to three bombs and columns B through E show, at least for this part of the spreadsheet, how, how many games we saw zero to three bombs. For example, in the first video, we saw zero bombs 31 times, one eight times, two six times, and three eight times. So let's, let's just look at the first three videos. So this summarizes the results right here. First, I wanted to get the natural probabilities as if the game, as if the numbers that had bombs on them were equally likely as the numbers that didn't. So how many ways can you pick three numbers out of 80? There's 82,160. 1,140 of those combinations of ways you could pick three out of 80 will result in catching all three bombs. 11,400 will result in two bombs and so on. So when you divide the number of combinations by the total, you get these probabilities. For example, the probability of catching all three bombs, assuming natural odds is 1.39%. So in video number one, excuse me, in the first three videos, I played 126 games. In 17 of them, I caught all three bombs. And 1.39% times 126 games is only 1.75. So statistically, I should have only have caught three bombs 1.75 times, and it happened 17 times. Huge red flag there. But let's Let's do an analysis of it anyway. So I got three bombs 15.25 times more often than expected. The standard deviation of the number of times you would get three bombs is 1.31 based on 126 games. So I'm, 100, so I'm almost 13 standard deviations above expectations. The probability of that is a number starting with an eight followed by 37 other numbers. So let's do a chi-squared test. And I'm not gonna explain what that is because I know this video is long already. And apologies in advance to the purists out there who, said, who may say that I shouldn't do a chi-squared test unless the sample size is big enough to have seen three bombs at least five times. But I did one anyway and that results in a probability of a one followed by 35 other numbers. So in both cases, the probabilities are just ridiculous. They're way off the charts. And doing the same thing for all five videos, looking at just the three bomb case, I should have seen it happen 2.89 times and instead it happened 30. The probability of that is a two followed by 70, one in a number that starts with a two followed by 70 other numbers. And a chi-squared test starts with the probability is one followed by a number, followed by a number starting with a one and followed by 67 other numbers. So there can be no serious de debate that the ball draw, that the visual representation of the ball draw is more likely to hit the bombs than is st statistically expected. That shouldn't, that we shouldn't even be arguing that what we should ar be arguing about and discussing is whether or not this is in violation of a gaming regulation that I shall talk about next. 
We are now looking at Nevada Revised Statute Regulation 14. Nevada prides itself as being an honest place to gamble, and I absolutely think that it is. And we have pages and pages and pages of gaming regulations about honest gambling, how it should be done, and we're also here in Nevada very careful to only let reputable people in the gaming business. So just regulation 14 has 32 pages, but the one I'm concerned with is on page eight. So this is regulation 14.040.5. Here we go. For gaming devices that are representative of live gambling games, the mathematical probability of a symbol or other element appearing in a game outcome must be equal to the mathematical probability of that symbol or element occurring in a live gambling game. So in other words, say take video poker. That's a game where you draw five cards out of a 52 card deck. This regulation would say that if you're going to have a video representation of that, that the probability of drawing any one of the 52 cards must be the same and uncorrelated to each other. And they absolutely are. Video poker here in Nevada is absolutely fair and compliant with that regulation. Same as video representations of craps and sick bow that use dice. It's also compliant with every Kino game I have ever seen with the possible exception of the one we're talking about now, Kino Explosion. For example, in regular Kino, the game is based on the game drawing 20 numbers randomly out of 80, as they do in live Kino. And I absolutely think that they do that fairly. So next, let me go back to one of the help screens and try to play the devil's advocate here and tell you what I think IGT would, would say, the makers of this game. Let's come full circle here and back to the help screen in the game. Note this last sentence. Explosions and fragments are evaluated after all numbers are drawn. It's kind of a vague statement. I doubt many Kino players would understand what it's saying, but here's my interpretation of it. It's saying that the regular base game plays fairly and randomly with the 20 ball draw. And of the numbers the players, the, the numbers that the player picks, I do think have a statistically fair chance of being caught in the ball draw. I absolutely make no representation or claims otherwise. What I think that this statement is saying and what is happening is that the game sometimes triggers this bonus feature. And in this bonus feature, effectively, the player gets extra balls. And the way the game is depicting these extra balls to the player is one of the, one of the numbers with a bomb being drawn by the game and then a fragment landing on one of the player's picks. I'm perfectly fine with the player getting extra balls and this already happens in some other games like Caveman Kino Plus and Extra, extra, extra Draw Kino. However, I don't like the way it's being depicted in this game. I think that my, my opinion is that it does violate Regulation 14. Of course, I'll let you form your own opinion. Clearly, IGT feels that it doesn't. I think IGT is a very respectable company. I, they, um, they make a high percentage of the gaming machines here in Nevada. And I have never encountered one that I thought was not in compliant with Nevada regulations before. And I'm not even saying that this one is, I just think that it merits discussion. I would also like to clarify that any gaffing in this game is done in the player's favor. The player, the, the player does get the bombs more often than is statistically expected. You might say, Mike, isn't that a good thing? Well, 
I think I'm all about honest, fair, and transparent gaming. And I and it just it just bothers me that when the player sees these numbers being drawn by the game, these 20 numbers, that some of them, those with a bomb on them, are more, are, are more likely to be drawn than the other numbers. So that's all I have to say. Um, I welcome your opinion about this in the comments. There's also a lively discussion of this over at my forum at Wizard of Vegas. I will leave a link to that. So there you go. Um, I have nothing else to say about this. So thanks for watching YouTube and hope to see you in another video. Bye.